Um, I think it was about seven years ago, uh, some of you know I teach a course called Business Policy, and I have people write a 15-page paper at the end talking about their professional and personal journeys going forward using some concepts from the class. And there was one um, paper that was filled with art. And it was quite remarkable. And I thought to myself, this is somebody that I should stay in touch with. So uh, our, our, uh, Sheila Aurora was the author of this paper. And needless to say, she got an A in the course. <laughs> My name is Sheila Aurora, and I'm Booth class of 2011. Full disclosure, I live a double life. During the day, I'm a finance manager. I work at Walgreens. I manage store care expenses. It's a $700 million P&L for all the expenses that flow through to maintain the Walgreens stores. That's what you'll find on my LinkedIn profile. But if you want to know what I really do, you have to follow me on Instagram. My profile on Instagram says, I'm a rock star when I paint, and I can't stop painting. That's exactly what I do. I'm an artist. I do abstract painting. And that's what I'm going to talk about tonight. So I thought I'd start out by sharing something that I wrote in business school. This goes back to 2010. And this was for Professor Harry Davis's business policy class. This was for the final paper where we were looking at a strategy for the next five to 10 years of your life. In this particular section, I'm outlining three different possibilities or scenarios for what that might be. And I'm going to read to you one of those scenarios. Story three. Joining the Millionaires Club, she sold her paintings to Oprah and Gates. Who next? Sheila Aurora has been painting and drawing her entire life. She works at Craft in finance, and she paints after work as her part-time job. She has a Booth MBA, so clearly she knows how to market herself. Oprah and Gates both have signed originals of her contemporary collection, Work and Life Balance, an abstract series of shapes that harmonizes the styles of personal and professional management. She has appeared on Good Morning America with co-anchor Michelle Obama and continues to work in paint, even though she just sold her last piece for over a million dollars. OK, wow. Now, while that did not happen, something, <laughs> something pretty amazing did. I got picked up by Thomas Masters Gallery. It's a very selective gallery in Old Town. Tom owns the gallery, and it is such an honor to be represented by his gallery and show my work in this beautiful space, surrounded by some very talented artists. And what I want to highlight here is vision is really important in terms of leadership. Having that big, bold idea of where you want to go or where you want to be, and yet at the same time being very open to that final destination and being very open to the possibilities that unfold along the way. So here you can see two of my paintings behind the front desk. This is some of my black and white work. Here's another shot behind the front desk. The painting on the right is mine. It's four by five feet. And you can see some of Tom's work on the left. This is the first wall when you walk into the gallery. This painting is called My Wish. And this is actually very exciting and special. Tom just sold this painting this week at the gallery. Thank you. And this is a piece I had in the window for a while at the gallery. This painting is called Storytelling. And I thought, how appropriate for tonight, a bunch of creatives gathered together sharing our stories. So I'm going to leave this painting up while I talk about the type of work that I do. The type of painting that I do is called abstract intuitive painting. So what does that look like? Basically, I start with a blank canvas. It's big. It's white. I have no plan. I have no idea what the final painting is going to look like. I just paint. I just go. And the way I approach the canvas is that I paint what I'm feeling inside of me, whatever I'm drawn to at the time. If I feel like painting purple, I'll paint purple. I very much lean into the intuition. So I was at this painting workshop a couple years ago, and I'm painting. I'd step back from the piece, paint a little bit more, think about the color, composition. And the instructor comes up to me and says, Sheila, it is painful to watch you paint. And I was like, what do you mean? And she said, you think too much. I don't think I feel my way through the painting. 
At first, I thought she was totally crazy. And then I realized she was right. That's exactly how you do these pieces. You feel your way through the painting. And there's a couple of things that start to happen when you lean into the intuition. The first is that you have to be able to take risks. And the second is you have to be very willing to let go. Now, tying this back to leadership, when I think about leadership, I see this balance between the logical, analytical, strategic way of thinking, and then there's this intuitive side that I just described. Now, depending on the situation, that balance may shift. You may need more of one, or you may need more of the other. But I think both logic and intuition are equally important when it comes to leadership. Now, we're all familiar with the logical side. We go to booth, we take courses, we practice this in our corporate jobs every day. But we don't talk about that intuitive side enough. I think it's important to practice what it's like to be intuitive, to know what it's like to live in that space where you're able to trust that voice inside of you, where you're able to take risks and to let go. And then once you know what that feels like, you can draw on that experience and bring that back into your leadership role or into your decision making. So I thought I'd end with one final painting. This is one of my favorite pieces, and it's called I Tried to Say Thank You in a Million Ways. And thank you so much for having me.